Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless luke 12 54 through 56 then he also said to the multitudes whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west immediately you say a shower is coming and so it is and when you see the south wind blow you say there will be hot weather and there is hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The U.S. military says the American plane was in international airspace conducting routine patrols. Look how close the Chinese plane gets, placing itself about 10 feet away and then drifting forward toward the nose of the American plane, forcing it to descend to avoid a crash. What message are the Chinese trying to send us? The Chinese are demonstrating that they view the Western Pacific as a Chinese lake. They'll continue to expand and they don't want any interference from anybody else. For several years, U.S. officials have been warning of increasingly dangerous behavior by China's pilots, saying a major incident is only a matter of time. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin raised concerns about it just last month with China's defense minister. The United States will continue to fly, to sail, and operate wherever international law allows. The close call comes as military tensions rise over Taiwan. China sending dozens of aircraft this week across the median line in the Taiwan Strait that separates China from Taiwan. And the Biden administration approving a $180 million arms sale to the self-governing island, including anti-tank systems. Tonight, the U.S. says it plans to raise the incident with China directly, saying all militaries in the region must respect safety and international law. A U.S. official warns that North Korea could conduct another nuclear test at any time following its record test launch of eight ballistic missiles on Sunday. I sort of assumed or thought that perhaps North Korea would slow down uh, some of these a provocative test because we know that the country is now dealing with the COVID pandemic. And I thought that would make the difference. It doesn't seem to be. The U.S. Special Representative to North Korea, uh, Sung Kim, has warned that after having stopped nuclear testing five years ago, North Korea may start again as early as this week. Why? Well, many defense analysts around the world are wrestling with that question. It's um, There's no clear reason except, broadly speaking, nuclear testing is a big deal, and North Korea hasn't done any for five years. Uh, Kim Jong-un has been very frank that he wants to streamline and perfect the country's nuclear arsenal. So at one level, they're testing another nuclear weapon now uh, to make it better or perhaps smaller, to, to be more effective as a tip on a missile. You know, you mentioned that he's made it clear his intentions. Has he sort of openly said that he's going to conduct nuclear tests? He has said we need to improve our nuclear arsenal and get mm. it ready and so on. We know about the nuclear test. This is not new. We, we've known for some weeks that uh, Western satellites can see preparations at the test site. Uh, they had been closed since 2018, 
And now it appears that they're opening one, which would indicate that they are preparing to put a bomb in there and blow it up. Why is testing a nuclear warhead? Why do that, given that you know it, it already ha they already have a stockpile of as many of as 40 nuclear bombs, I, I believe. That's right. Um, it could be because they are trying to make smaller, lighter nuclear warheads that would fit on those missiles that they've been firing off willy-nilly since the beginning of the year. Um, and it, and it, it almost certainly is that Kim Jong-un trusts the West, and particularly the U.S., so little that he wants a hundred percent nuclear deterrent. He wants to have so many weapons that he thinks that the, the U.S. or South Korea would never dare attack him. North Korea is raising tensions from Asia to Ukraine and beyond, and not just with its unprecedented string of missile tests. The Pentagon says Pyongyang has sold rockets to Russian mercenaries known as the Wagner Group. The British government says the group has some 20,000 mercenaries fighting in Ukraine, and National Security Council spokesman John Kirby says the group is spending more than $100 million per month in Ukraine. Rockets have returned to Ukraine with a vengeance. In one of the largest assaults on civilian targets since the war began more than 10 months ago, 69 missiles aimed mostly at Russia's preferred civilian target, electricity infrastructure. Like this facility in the eastern city of Kharkiv that burned for hours. The barrage left the country in darkness. 40% of Kyiv was without power, according to its mayor. The attack looked like retribution, coming only days after our Ukrainian drone struck an airbase deep inside Russia, killing three Russian servicemen. Ukraine's military said it shot down all of the 16 missiles Russia fired at the capital, Kyiv, this morning. But as this damage shows, even an intercepted missile can rain down ruin on civilians. The strikes injured three people in Kyiv, including a 14-year-old girl. Just look at this crater. There was an elderly man and his son in this house when it was hit, and incredibly, they made it out alive. Leonard Fitkuren lived in this home for 40 years until this morning's attack. He and his son escaped after fast-reacting neighbors forced open the door. Are you angry about this? Are you sad? What else can I feel now? But I would say that it's not even hate, he said. I just feel contempt for these people. A contempt that, for many Ukrainians, is becoming harder to contain. The Iran military is holding joint naval, air and ground exercises in the Gulf. The annual military drills were held near the strategic Strait of Hormuz, located at the mouth of the Persian Gulf. The strait holds importance for global energy supplies, with about a fifth of all oil traded at sea passing through it. Commandos, airborne infantry, drones, fighter jets, helicopters, military transport, aircraft and submarines. According to the local media, the military drills were organized to improve readiness in confronting foreign threats and any possible invasion. We are living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. God in his grace and mercy is warning the world of his impending judgment. The Bible refers to this judgment as the tribulation in which God will pour out his wrath on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. I have had many people ask the question, how do you know Jesus is returning? And why is today any different than any other time in history? Jesus gives his followers the answer to that question in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Jesus told his followers that there would be a convergence of Bible prophecy right before his return. Notice Jesus said, when these things begin to happen. Jesus used the plural word things, meaning when you see multiple prophecies converging at the same time, that his return was at the doors, as we read in Matthew 24, 33. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the doors. There can be no denying all these things are beginning to take place. It's been called the blizzard of the century, the snowstorm battering the U.S. and Canada. An emergency has been declared for New York State, which is bearing the brunt of the storm. At least 50 people have died across the United States. Snow has buried parts of Buffalo, New York, and emergency crews are struggling to reach trapped residents. Some of the dead have been found frozen in vehicles and snowbanks. Severe weather events are becoming increasingly common. 
Floods, fires, and extreme temperatures wreaked havoc across the world in 2022, one of the warmest years on record. Places where cold is the norm are experiencing abnormal temperatures with devastating consequences. This is no rowdy ski holiday. It's a research station near the South Pole. And minus 11.8 degrees Celsius was 40 degrees hotter than usual on March 18th. It's probably the largest temperature anomaly ever recorded. Incredibly, at the same time at the North Pole, some places were 30 degrees warmer than usual. Mountain glaciers, such as this one in the Himalayas that feeds the mighty river Ganges, continued to shrink as India was hit by heat waves that came earlier and were longer and or hotter than usual. Pakistan also sweltered. A few weeks later, both countries were hit by massive monsoon rains. One third of Pakistan was flooded, creating a huge humanitarian emergency. The floods destroyed farmland, killed more than 1,700 people, and displaced more than 33 million. My child died in the damp, cold nights. We don't have anything to eat. My husband is unemployed and poor. My two children have died in the camps. West Africa also suffered an unusually heavy rainy season, with months of flooding in Nigeria displacing up to two million people. In East Africa, the rains failed again, worsening the most severe drought in recent history. The UN says 36 million people are affected in Somalia and parts of Ethiopia and Kenya, with more than five million children malnourished. They're sickly most of the time. They go to bed on an empty stomach. I just feel terrible. In Madagascar, the seasonal rains also failed. After four years of drought, the south of the island is facing a food crisis. In some places, residents have had to dig into the dry riverbed to find water. 2022 also saw China suffer its longest and harshest heat wave on record, with the Yangtze and other rivers reduced to mere trickles and many lakes turned into dust bowls. 2022 was a year of extremes afflicting nearly every continent. Torrential rains buried parts of Brazil under rivers of mud. In the city of Petropolis, a mudslide last February killed more than 230 people. I've lived here for 44 years and I've never seen anything like this. To die this way, my friends have all gone. My friends all died. Across the Atlantic, a record-breaking summer heat wave in Europe, wildfires turned forests to ash. In parts of Africa, where water is scarce, the water simply dried up. Drought forced hundreds of thousands from their homes in search of water and food. I have six children. I fled from the drought. I fled because there is no water, no food. In South Asia, monsoon rains lashed Pakistan. Catastrophic flooding submerged hundreds of villages under stagnant water, killing more than 1,700 people. Asia-Pacific didn't escape. At the end of monsoon season, tropical storm Nalji lashed the Philippines. More than 100 died. This summer, on the U.S. west coast, more than 7,500 wildfires in California alone. Or, uh, every season, the, it, it, the next season, it's worse than the one before it. On the East Coast, the second deadliest storm of the century. Hurricane Ian pounded Florida, 250 km per hour winds. In Cuba, Hurricane Ian knocked out the island's electrical grid. Cuba's 11 million residents were left in the dark. Ladies and gentlemen, the six years since the Paris Climate Agreement have been the six hottest years on record. Our addiction to fossil fuels is pushing humanity to the brink. We face a stark choice. Either we stop it or it stops us. And it's time to say enough. Enough of brutalizing biodiversity. Enough of killing ourselves with carbon. Enough of treating nature like a toilet. Enough of burning and drilling and mining our way deeper. We are digging our own graves. Was the extreme weather of 2022 a warning or a foregone conclusion? In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events 
each more unusual, destructive, and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent. God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. As the birth pains continue to become more frequent and more intense, one has to wonder, how close are we to the rapture and the seven-year tribulation? Joel 1.15 Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. The world is baffled at the events taking place in the weather, and yet it was foretold 2,000 years ago in Bible prophecy that this would happen. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front-run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. This year has been one of surprises. Surprises thrown at us by Mother Nature in her own hot and cold manner as we battle with biting cold and bitter winters and as the year comes to an end we can't forget the volcanic eruptions which shook in different parts of the world with hot lava flowing rocking whole regions take a look the world's largest active volcano hawaii's mauna loa erupted at the end of november this year after lying dormant for almost 40 long years the world witnessed volcanic eruptions of a high magnitude as the magma from Mauna Loa kept rolling down the slopes in large volumes. Drawing worldwide attention, Mauna Loa in Hawaii showed exactly how alive it is, despite being dormant these last four decades. Mauna Loa offered us a spectacular weeks-long show of its first eruption. Before going quiet for good, at the height of the flare-up, Mauna Loa spewed fountains of lava 200 feet high into the sky, sending rivers of molten rock gushing down its sides, wowing volcanologists and helicopter-riding tourists. Geologists continue to monitor dozens of what are called continuing volcanic eruptions. Within a week of Mauna Loa's eruption, another major volcano couldn't hold back any longer. Thousands of villagers living near Indonesia's Mount Semeru had to literally run for their lives. 
and seek refuge under the shadow of blaring emergency sirens as lava snaked towards their homes under a black sky after the Mount Semeru volcano erupted in December this year. Indonesia has around 130 active volcanoes. Guatemala in Central America witnessed the eruption of one of the most active volcanoes in the region. Guatemala's Fuego volcano, which sits about 16 kilometers from Antigua, the country's former capital and biggest tourist attraction. It's been two weeks since the incident took place. The magnitude of spewing lava and ash forced Guatemalan authorities to briefly close the country's largest airport before the volcanic activity finally eased off. Moving on to South America's Chile, its snow-capped Villarica volcano was shaken by earthquakes as it spit huge spirals of fire. Placing the authorities on alert for a possible eruption in a picturesque area beloved by tourists. Since October, the 2,847 meter high Villarica had been the site of gas explosions and seismic events, with pillars of fire up to 220 meters high shooting out of its lava lake. Immediately after this, Chile issued another volcano alert as its Lascar volcano in the Andes rumbled into action, triggering minor Earth tremors. It appears changes to our planet are now accelerating. There has been a dramatic increase in volcanic eruptions around the world, and nobody knows why. You probably haven't noticed, because nobody seems to be talking about it, but something is going on with the world. Volcanoes are erupting at a faster pace than ever, and earthquakes are going crazy, and nobody has an explanation for it. Nobody except God, that is. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day's signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption, as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24.12, And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Arrested! That's 28-year-old Brian Christopher Koberger in custody today and wearing an anti-suicide vest. Police documents obtained by Inside Edition show he is awaiting extradition to Idaho for the brutal murders of the four University of Idaho students. The arrest went down here in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, some 2,500 miles away from the murder scene in Idaho. The FBI and a police SWAT team raided a home in this private gated community behind me around 3 a.m. Koberger reportedly had a blank stare as he was arrested and also asked if anyone else had been taken into custody. Now we're also learning that a white Elantra like the one police had been searching for was impounded. Koberger will remain in custody behind bars here in Pennsylvania until an extradition hearing next Tuesday. Koberger is a PhD student in, get this, criminal justice at Washington State University in Pullman, just eight miles from Moscow, Idaho. 
That's the same college attended by Jasmine Kernodal, sister of one of the victims. He was researching criminal minds and actually reached out to career criminals in a Reddit post. My name is Brian, and I'm inviting you to participate in a research project that seeks to understand how emotions and psychological traits influence committing a crime. This study seeks to understand the story behind your most recent criminal offense. Could the grisly murders be part of his gruesome research? If this is our killer, he chose to do wrong because I suspect he wanted to know firsthand what it was like to do the sort of crimes he was studying. We begin with breaking news out of Idaho. The whole nation has been obsessed with the case, and news organizations broke into regular programming to report the arrest. A full cleanup of the crime scene was just getting started today. When news of the arrest broke, it was abandoned. The big break comes seven weeks after the discovery of the bodies of Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Ethan Chapin, and Zana Kernodal, stabbed to death in their beds. Surveillance shows an SUV, headlights on, parked on Parsons Boulevard. Around 5 o'clock Tuesday morning, a 41-year-old woman walks towards it. Shocking video reveals what happened next. Police say the driver, her 36-year-old husband, accelerated, crashing into her. Investigators tell us there is no doubt this was intentional. I thought it was crazy. That's all I saw. That car landed in Jeffrey Zhang's yard and mangled his wrought iron fence. Lots of people in this Flushing neighborhood are trying to make sense of all of this. The couple has a history of domestic violence. Police say that their sons, 11, 9, and 6, were in that white Ford Explorer when their dad slammed into their mom. Officers arrested their dad on the scene. The boys were not injured. And EMS crews rushed their mom to New York Presbyterian Hospital. At last check, she's critical. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. This vigil at a Virginia church in November, just one of the many across the U.S. in 2022, honoring the victims of a mass shooting. This one left six people dead at a local Walmart and a community on edge. It's scary that a place where I feel so safe, like just going to Walmart, or going to the grocery store, is now some place I need to be on edge and be scared. According to the nonprofit Gun Violence Archive Group, there have been more than 625 mass shootings in the U.S. in 2022. That's almost two for every day of the year. Punctuating these tragedies, the even wider crush of gun violence in all its forms, which has left more than 42,000 Americans dead this year alone. Among the most heinous mass shootings this year, the killing of 10 African Americans by a self-proclaimed white supremacist at a grocery store in Buffalo, New York. A July 4th parade shooting left seven dead in Illinois. Two of the victims, the parents, of a now orphaned little boy. Room 12, where's room 12? Then there was the heart-wrenching massacre at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. 19 children and two teachers killed. Looking ahead to 2023, experts say they don't expect a major drop-off in gun violence in America. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. 
The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vital, The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump, The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 2013, United States v. Windsor, the Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and he shall become one flesh. 2015. Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God, and to pray to him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. Psalm 1, 1 through 6, tells us the way of the righteous in the end of the ungodly. Psalm 1, 1 through 6, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Daniel 12, 9 and 10. And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Just as Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end, the apostle John was told, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Revelation 22, 10, and 11. And he said to me, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine 
faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.